Hey, it's Ryan Gordon, and I wanted to tell you that SDL3 is now officially at ABI lock, which is to say, we still have some more work to do before an official release, but we will not change or remove anything from the existing API, which means it is now safe to port your games and your apps to SDL3. So I thought we might take tonight and uh, spend an hour or two and port a game from SDL2 to SDL3. Um, and if you aren't looking at this screen uh, in the highest quality and at full screen you might want to do that because a lot of the text is going to be small in a little text editor for writing software so um, the game I thought we might do is Quake 3 Arena um, it's an open source game it was released under the GPL by id Software many years ago uh, personal favorite of mine very old game at this point but still just a masterpiece um, if you don't own it you can play along by buying it on Steam for 15 bucks and don't get nervous it only has a Windows symbol here all you need to do is download it on Linux uh, you don't have to use Proton or anything like that. You just need to download it and copy the data files out of it. The, uh, there's just a couple of PK pack files, PK1234, whatever, that you just copy them into the open source version, which is called IO Quake 3. One of the open source versions is called IO Quake 3. My personal favorite. Uh, uh, it's had a lot of work over the initial GPL release of Quake 3 Arena from id Software, so this is kind of the gold standard for open source versions of the game. So we're going to take this, and I've already checked it out, and we're just going to get started and see what we can, how far we can get on this. Uh, before we do, I should say this, a lot has changed between SDL2 and SDL3, and I don't just mean new features or redesigned things, but also like very basic things, like most of the functions have been renamed. Um, and we have written a very, very detailed migration guide. It's on the wiki. If you don't like wikis, you can look at this as a markdown file. It's in the source code repository uh, for SDL, but you know it's nice to have like source code uh, formatting and stuff like that. So, and we have this all broken down. Lots of explanation of how to do it. It's broken down header by header, so you can just find the exact one you want, or you can just search for a symbol. Like if you want to know why get error message changed, uh, we took that function out. Here's a simple way to do it. Lots of this is you know here's some code if you need to swap something out, just you know, little tiny things to get you up and running, uh, just moving from SDL2 to SDL3. Now I'm going to tell you, this migration file is amazing, but it's also very, very long. If I were just to scroll through this, it goes on and on and on. Um, a lot has changed, and a lot of it is not necessarily like big porting effort, but a lot of it is things that were renamed, like these things. That's now called this. Um, and all that is documented, but a lot of that is just mechanical stuff. So we have also provided something very important that'll save your life called uh, the COSINEL file, the migration, there it is, the COSI file, I don't know how you pronounce that. There's a program called COSINEL, which does something called semantic patching, where basically we give you a configuration file which just has a bunch of expressions, which says, when you see this in the source code, make it look like this. Um, which is, you know, this, this will not port your game to SDL3, but it will take care of a lot of the busy work for you. Um, so you can focus on the actual programming challenges of it. So uh, it's very easy to run. We have the instructions are right here in the file. Um, this thing definitely runs on Linux. Uh, it doesn't seem like it needs any real particular system dependencies. It's mostly just standard in and standard out, I think. So it might run on other systems too, or maybe even if you're on Windows, you might have to use like the Windows uh, Linux subsystem, whatever they call it. Um, in the worst case scenario, it's absolutely worth just firing up a virtual machine with Linux in it, getting this thing to run once over your program, and then never looking at it again. But um, the thing, the program you run for this is called spatch, patch sp file, I think it's called. Let me put that file in. Projects SDL build scripts. Sorry for the beeping. Stop migration. So, and then you just basically run this thing. You just point at the directory with all your source code in it. Quake three puts all their stuff in a directory called code and this will spit the standard out. And you just let it run. Ignore the warnings you get at the top. We don't care about that. And as you can see, it's going to just start chugging through every C file. There it goes. Um, now, it, this takes a while. As you can see, each of these individual C files is taking a, a second or two for it to process. So um, you don't have to do all of these when this whole thing is to run across Quake 3. Quake 3 has all its SDL code in one uh, in, in one place basically so it ends up even though it looks at every file it only needs to change it only needs to change about four of them total in the whole project so um, you could get creative and uh, I'm gonna cancel this thing for now you can get creative and try to narrow down which parts of the program it looks at or you know 
whatever like that. But it's easier just to point the thing at your project and then go get a cup of coffee and come back in an hour or something like that. Um, but to save us all the time, I have actually just already run this thing on IO Quake 3 just so that we don't have to wait for it. And you can see what it generates eventually is a unified diff that you can run through a patch program to apply to your program once you look at it and make sure it looks sane. And you can see a lot of it is things like it took out the busy work of this used to be an SDL symbol in SDL2, audio underscore U8, but now since that was silly not having SDL under to pollute the namespace, it's now SDL audio U8. And some of it's more complicated, like we got rid of uh, SDL has read timestamp counter, that's gone. Uh, nobody should be using that for a lot of reasons. There are better systems, better things out there for it, but there is no way. We did not put a replacement in there, so for now it's just the semantic patch just knows to put if zero there, so take it out. And then, you know, whatever, all these other things that are just manual translation from, you know, this used to be called this, and now it's called this. It takes care of all that for you, so you don't have to mess around with it. And something I love about this specifically on Quake 3 is that the, the, the semantic patch file it spit out was exactly 666 lines of text, which, you know, for Quake 3, there's somewhere there is a Kaku demon just laughing out loud at the fact that that's the exact size of this file. I think that's fantastic. Okay, um, very funny. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're going to apply that patch. Um, wait, where's that at? That's not it. Where'd you go? There you are. Okay, so it's in the code directory, so go in here, patch p1, io quake 3 patch, boom, there you go. And we'll just do a git diff real quick. There we are, and there's all our stuff. Okay, so now we don't need that patch file anymore, it's now sitting here. And then other than that, we're just going to start porting this thing and just see what we run into. And whether you're porting a game to from SDL2 to SDL3, or you're porting a game from Windows to Linux or whatever, basically the way you port anything is you just try and build it, and you see what kind of problems come up, and then you fix the problem and try again until you run out of problems to fix. And then when you've run out of problems to fix, you've successfully ported it. So, um, Quake 3 uses make files, like a GNU make file. It doesn't use CMake or MISON or anything like that, so we're just going to go in here, we're going to look for the word SDL, Let's just see what it has. Alright, heaven. SDL dir. That's the source code directory for their SDL backend, which is the only backend now. SDL H dir. I assume that's the header directory. Uh, let's change that from two to three. Easy, easy, good. SDL C flags. Okay. Package config SDL two. We're gonna change that to SDL three. So SDL main works very differently in SDL three. We're not gonna get into this because I don't think we're gonna need it for a Linux port tonight. But um, there is no separate library. You don't have to do all this weird tap dancing with define. So we're just gonna nuke that for now. Um, and then SDL libs needs the same thing. Where else? Use SDL two config if all else fails. Oh, another fun thing in SDL three. There is no SDL three config script anymore. Uh, everything, if you're on a Unix like system that uses this goes through package config now, pkg config. Uh, the package name, as you can see up here, is just sdl3. And this script is gone, it does not exist anymore, so we're just going to get rid of that. Easy, easy. Um, that adds the C flags, that'll add the libs, that's cool. And we are already past the Linux section into macOS. Now, the makefile for Quake 3 has different platforms in different sections, and there's a little bit of code duplication and a little bit of like complexity embedded in here. All of this would need to be looked at later, but right now we only care about Linux because I'm working on a Linux desktop machine. So we're just going to do that and say that's good enough for now. Let's try and build it and see what happens. Well, I can tell one thing is going to go wrong already. All right, it's building the dedicated server, which uses no SDL because it has no video or audio. They just they have that all simple as possible. I'm going to quit out of this for a second because one thing we're definitely going to want to do before we do anything else. All right, there is, there it is, SDL2. There's an SDL2 directory with lots of different include files, okay. Um, there we go, uh, that, that's fine. We're gonna make an SDL3 directory for separate sets of headers. I'm not gonna delete these so the, the, the old headers so the diff isn't massive, but we're gonna put the new ones in there. They are in an include directory. And then we're just gonna copy these from SDL3. SDL include, there we go. SDL3 into 
So three include. All right, now you'll note I've put this in here with a separate subdirectory where it says SDL3. We'll talk about that in a moment because I have a feeling the first problem we're going to hit is going to be that. And then I'll talk about it in more detail. Let's see. Okay, so we're building. I'm going to do a make jade on this so we're not sitting here watching the decade server compile for an hour. Not that it takes an hour to compile, but that is not our warning. That's okay. Oh, and there you go. It's exactly the th thing I thought we were going to find originally. It says I can't find SDL version dot h. Now, this file still exists in SDL three. This header still exists, but it's n it's not that it, this file doesn't exist. It's that we're looking in the wrong directory now. These now need to be SDL three. And the reason I did this is because um, I put this in a different directory than Quake three was expecting to find SDL two. Require a minimum version for SDL. Why don't we bump that up while we're here? Three one. We don't need to worry about old, old versions anymore of SDL2, so let's bump that out. Take it, yeah. um, 313 is the version where we hit ABI lock. That's the... anything before that, the APIs may not match up, so it's best to do that. And then anything newer than that will still work, as long as we've only used APIs that are in this version, which will be fine. That's, that's where we are right now. Um, okay, so, about this real quick, though. In SDL2, the way you would include SDL as a bunch of headers. The the canonical way to do it, the way we insisted you do it, was like this. Include quotes, not brackets, SDL.h quotes. We did not want you to do it like this. We did not want you to do SDL2 or whatever like that. But this has changed in SDL3. Now we want you to do brackets, not quotes, SDL3, SDL.h. Now you can also do they're including a specific file here. It's totally legal and moral to include just a single file, but for the most part, this will include everything, and the kitchen sink is generally what you want, so we usually just tell you this is what you want to do. Now, why do we used to do sdl.h in quotes? Because this would work everywhere, and you could always set up the compiler to make sure it could find the sdl headers at the right place, and that was fine. Now. This is also true for brackets, but we didn't want to interfere with system headers. But the problem is, Mac OS has made this hard for us, because Mac OS, if you build SDL and use it as a framework instead of a library or static code or whatnot like that, th this is the exact format they want your framework includes to look like a directory and then a base header. So it was just easier to make sure that this is the new canonical way to do it in SDL3. And the nice thing is this will not step on your old SDL2 code if you have some if des to keep both versions around. Um, that's fine. Everyone can be happy with that. Frameworks will work without tap dancing now if you're a macOS framework type of person. Um, so that that is why that is there. So while we are sitting here, though, because we're going to hit this 14 more times, let's go ahead and look for every include of SDL and just see if we can catch all these right off the bat. Uh, we don't care about VC projects. Let's get rid of that. I don't have VC. Okay. You know what, that's fine, that's all part of the SDL headers. Okay, so there's a few places. All right, let's... Um... Okay, let me look at that one more time, let's see. Okay, so this needs it. Let's just pop this into all of these real quick. Um, also, a after my whole spiel, you can probably get rid of this even if you're using local headers, but we're trying to minimize the changes we make, so let's not get in... It's important when you're porting something not to get into the spirit of improving it. You're just literally trying to move from one point to another, and then improvements can be made later. But you don't want to be re-architecting things now, because you want to be able to see exactly what you changed just to get the thing up and running. So let's skip the SDL2 headers. Gosh, there's a lot of includes in this. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's the rest of ours, I think, probably. So let's just do these. Um, there's no need to include SDLH and a subheader. It will do it for you, so let's get rid of those. Uh, I think that was true in SDL2 also, but let's just, you know, clean that up. That, that's a, against advice I just gave. That's a reasonable small cleanup. We'll call that part of porting. That's the one we just did. Cool. We're just going through and doing all these real fast. It's an include file. Where'd that come from? We'll get rid of that in a minute. Uh, an original file. That was from the patch, probably. Okay. Good. 
almost there. Oh, missed. There we go. Good. And these are STL headers, so we don't care about those includes. And that's Xcode projects. Okay, that'll do it. Um, okay, good. Now this will probably need 15 million other things, but that's one less bug we're going to have as we go along. Just going to look for... Let's remove that dot .orig file just so we're not confused by that in the future. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's try and build it again to see how far we get. Uh, da -dun. Okay, there's our first failure right there. Get ref API. Okay, I'm going to bet you sysload function. Let's find that real quick here. Define. Yep, okay. There it is. Okay, sysload function just is a macro that translates into SDL load function. In SDL2, this would return a void pointer. In SDL3, it returns... Uh, what is it called? Hang on. Load function. We'll just look at our migration guide. It'll tell us. Uh, SDL load function now returns function point, SDL function pointer instead of void pointer. Um, the reason for that is that if you're being totally pedantic about things, you will need get ref API. Let's see. There's it. Uh, if we're being totally pedantic, a computer can have separate address spaces for data and code. So in a perfectly perfect portable program, you should be able to say, this is a function pointer I'm returning instead of a void pointer. Um, and GCC gets upset about that being different. So we will just put a cast in here, which is the correct thing to do. We're saying, this is some kind of generic co code pointer that this returns, and now we need to be a very specific code pointer, a pointer to whatever this function is. Let's get ref API. Yeah, okay. So that'll solve that. That will not cause problems after that. Let's get our other one since we're here. Deal entry. Oh, there's nothing I like less than variables declared like this. So let's make that a type def real quick here. Deal entry t. Okay. Now instead of this gobbledygook, you can just do deal entry t. Deal entry means the same thing. Totally readable. Easy to cast to. Deal entry. Good. Done. Entry point. What is that? Via main proc. Now it's a pointer to a pointer here, so we do not want to have list of the full pointer. We just want via main proc, and that'll do it. Nothing really complicated. The thing works the same way. It just needs to be cast because you know we're making sure this thing will run on a PDP 11 or something. Uh, there is no current computer that you would possibly care about that has a separation like that. But like I said, if we're looking for just pedanticness, that's that's why it works like that now. Um, okay, good. There's some other things, but they don't seem to be upset about that at the moment, so we'll come back to those if they bother us. Okay, good, let's build. It's going. Still going, that's good. Let's build in QCommon. It's the bot code. Not our warning. Oh, there you go. All right, what do we got here? Unknown type SDL key sim. Okay, this is true. These have changed. Um, this used to be in SDL2, you get a, 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 a keyboard event. A, you've pressed a key, you've let go of a key, something like that. And there was a structure in there that was called key sim, and this does not exist anymore. It is now, find it, keyboard event. Uh, the, the keyboard event you would normally get, normally it would have, in SDL2, one of those structures, which basically had these three fields in it. And there, was, there was no sense in that being separate, so we, we blew that out and just put the, those fields right in the keyboard event. So, scan code, key, and mod. This would have been called sim in SDL2, which you'll see in a second. If I can find it. Where'd you go? That's not it. Go. I'm not kidding. Hang on. Let me close some files here. I got too many things open. All right. There we go. There's my thing. Okay. So this is. Uh, so rather than pass the struct around, let's just pass the actual event in here. 
keyboard, SDL keyboard event, and we won't call it keysim because it doesn't make any sense anymore. We'll just call it event. Event. Let's search and replace on all these real quick. Oh, and this one's going to want to do it too. Steel keyboard event. Now this is risky. Usually when you do this sort of thing, you want to fix the entire function that you were working on, then come back to this. But you know we're here, so we'll just keep going. Keep my search and replace mojo going here. In print key, that was the other function I was doing, so that's okay. Okay, and now we're into this. Okay, so um, this is the function that would call that. Now instead of getting the structure out of this event, let's just pass that event itself. So all we need to do is nuke this key sim part. Anything else? This guy does it too. And that's it. Okay, so let's go back and keyboard event this thing. Okay, so uh, scan code and mod were there, but remember I said sim was a thing that changed, changed from sim to key, so let's go ahead and fix that real quick. This is in the other function. A couple of those. Alright, theoretically that should make it work. Okay, so let's just see if that compiles now. Might be other stuff. There is other stuff, but hey! No more keyword stuff, we're onto the mouse now. Going just swimmingly along here. Set relative mouse mode. Um, basically that just makes your mouse scroll forever in one direction, so in an FPS your mouse doesn't leave the window and you can just keep spinning around in a circle. Uh, very, very important for FPSs. Set relative mouse mode. Um, now I'm going to just tell you that some of these things I actually know off the top of my head, but I just wanted, I, I'm going to keep coming back to the migration guide to remind you that if you have questions, just do a search in this document. It's going to almost certainly tell you exactly what you need. This was replaced with this. Okay. So, um, and there's a little more to it than that. This also needs a window now. We don't turn it on globally for everything. You might have also noticed, too, that in SDL2, this would not have said true. It would have said SDL true like that. We have gotten rid of SDL bool as a type. Now we just use a standard C bool, C99 bool, C++ bool like that, and the standard true and false like that. Um, so you can get rid of those things. It's, those were driving us all nuts for years, and we just finally decided to bite the bullet and say, your compiler needs to support this, or there needs to be some sort of compiler-specific magic to make sure that this works So when you use SDL3, so good. Um, I don't know why they're using set window grab and set window relative mode, because these two things are... This one implies this one, but I bet there was a very old version of SDL2 where this was broken, and they had to explicitly grab the mouse, too. So we'll just delete that. You don't need it anymore. And then let's go ahead and fix the rest of these two, because I see there's a couple below it. This one is false. Good. Get rid of the grab. This one is true. Good. Get rid of the grab. All right. And then they do it here, so one more of those. Get rid of the grab. All the usual. Cool. Great. Good. Um, okay, what's next? And then we fix the problem, so we'll just build again and see what the next problem is. That's usually the best way to do it. Too many arguments to function show cursor. Aha. Uh -huh. Something we got rid of in SDL3 is that we used to have a lot of things that were like, here's a toggle. Call this function. Or do you want shown or not? Set true or false. We've gotten rid of that. Now it's just show cursor. And if you want the false version of that, we have a separate function called hide cursor. It just seemed clearer. That's why we did it. Um, so we just need to remove the parameter on that one because it was already called show cursor. Good. And that's it. We're done with mouse stuff now. How good. Okay, let's move on to joysticks. See, this is going pretty well so far, right? Okay, so this is something worth noting. Um, in SDL3, in SDL2, we had a lot of things that were like, that used this pattern right here, this magic for loop, where you would say, tell me how many of something there are, in this case, joysticks, tell me how many joysticks we have, and it would give you an integer, this many total, and then you would iterate through that many of them and say, tell me something about joystick number three, four, whatever, in that range. But the problem is that this was not atomic. This was a racy sort of thing to do, because you could say, how many joysticks do you have? And it would say, I have two of them. And then you would come in here, and by the time you hit this for loop, joystick number one had been unplugged. And that would cause confusion and chaos. So rather than do that, we have made we have changed this to now, usually the pattern where you would see num joysticks is now, you would say sticks equals SDL get joysticks. And there's other things besides just joysticks that do this. What was it called? Total. 
Um, you can optionally give it that integer still if you want the count, but this is always going to be an array of identifiers that is null terminated. So if you just want to iterate through the array, you don't necessarily need this number. You can just put in null there. Um, then I'm going to write this in here, SDL joystick ID pointer sticks equals null. Cool. All right, um, where'd you go? Oop, I went past it. Sticks, there it is, okay. So this line goes away because we did that. Um, this thing will return null if there's a total like out of memory failure, but otherwise, even if there are no joysticks, it'll give you an array that just has a null in it and total will be zero. So, But total will be zero even if it fails, so we're not gonna bother to check for the null here. Um, and then it iterates through that array. There's no longer get joystick name for index. It's now called, because there is no index, global index like that anymore. Get joystick, come here, stick name for, there it is. Yeah, okay, exactly. Get joystick name for index replaced with this. And there's a lot of explanation up there about everything I just said to you, but I just skipped over. Um, so this goes here. We no longer look at I because there is no I. It wants a joystick ID, an instance ID uh, for the specific joystick. So it's got to be an index into this array that SDL gave us. And the thing about this is like, now a user could still unplug a joystick, but since we're no longer talking about some index into some internal thing, you're looking at the actual ID. If that joystick gets unplugged, that ID will become un invalid, uh, but life will go on. Uh, it, the, the array is still otherwise stable, the, the, the size of it and such, so, because you own it, it's your array now. Uh, but let's do this then, just in case, because if that does happen, get joystick name for ID will return a null. Const char pointer name equals blah blah blah. So we can just do name name otherwise unknown stick joystick oh that sounds better okay good just just to make sure we don't dereference the null and string cat that just seems like a safer thing to do um, and that's that now you own this array um, you don't own this name that's why it returns a const char SDL keeps that uh, thing for itself if the joystick is unplugged uh, is unplugged SDL keeps a cache of of the string names, so it will remain valid even if the joystick, if you query this and the joystick is unplugged, that pointer won't go away until, uh, basically until you call SDL quit. Because the theory being, if at the worst case we're storing a couple of bogus joystick strings that are no longer useful to you for a handful of joysticks, it's okay, we'll free it when you quit. Um, so it won't leak, but you know, it seemed like the right thing to do. So, But this thing up here, this array that you get from get joysticks, you own that. It, it allocates an array and hands that to you. So if we do fall out of here, I see there's some returns in here. We are definitely going to want to call SDL free sticks before so that we don't leak that memory. I see a return there. Let's throw that, uh, let's throw that in there. And we'll free it at the end when we're definitely done with it. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back up and do other stuff, but I see this says, fix me migration. This is the Cosinel script put this in here. Check for valid instance, because it does not know in the expression it has where your array of uh, stuff is. That's why they, it puts a bogus function called get joystick instance from index here, so that you can figure out. Um, this used to be an index, now they need an instance, so we're just going to, we have it, it's called sticks, it's our array. Let's do that real quick. Cool. And we need to open the correct thing there too. Cool. Okay. Yeah, stick, stick, stick. Good. Let's go back up here and make sure I didn't miss anything. Wasn't it? Da da da. Hmm. Okay, so we got we fixed that one. Free our sticks there. This is fine. This is mostly Quake code, not SDL code. Open joystick. There you go. This needs to look at the sticks array because this is no longer an index. Quake was nice enough to make sure this index is valid and in range before it tries to dereference this array, so that's nice. And we already fixed that one. Okay, I think we're good. Um, these functions have changed, but I don't know why they're just querying stuff, so we're just going to delete those lines because that's just they're asking for the thing and then throwing it away. I'm guessing that was probably to work around a bug in a very early version of SDL2. We're no longer on that version, so moving on. Okay. What else do we need here? Build. Init joystick. Did I miss one? Oh, I did miss one. Whoops. 
Get joystick name for index. My bad. Okay. Joystick name. What was it called? Joystick name for ID. Yeah. Okay. For ID. For instance, and that would just be sticks. Wrapping the number they had picked out of that. This, that's not necessarily a good way to do that because that number is not going to be consistent from run to run. But that's how Quake is set up right now. As you can tell, no one really uses a joystick to play Quake. Uh, let's see. Did I spell that wrong? Get joystick name. Get, oh, get joystick name, my bad. Try it again. Alright, I think that's it. All the joystick code's done. Now we are moving on to events. Okay. Um, it's mad that we assign this text input event field to a char. It wants a const char because um, sdl3 sdl event text input this used to be a char array of like 32 characters or something like that to keep it small but we could overflow that so now this is a const char that you do not own and SDL can allocate something larger and cache it and you know do whatever you know pull up strings uh, string allocations and stuff as far as you're concerned it's just a string pointer you treat it like any other one and stop using it once the event's done if you need it copy it somewhere but all this thing needed was a const char because since it was a char array you could assign it just to char c but now it's a string pointer so const char done quick and dirty utf8 to utf32 conversion i'm not going to change this cuz again the point of porting stuff is not to make redesigns but when you don't have to but just to get the thing running i'm just going to add a fix me here use sdl step utf8 instead sdl has basically the same code but you know having uh it handles things like you know, utf6 utf16 surrogate pairs and stuff like that you know things that shouldn't be in utf8 it handles that more cleanly and you don't have to have this ridiculous gobbledygook in your program because sdl has it for you it just becomes one function call you call in the loop instead uh, so we put a fix me for that but we're not going to mess with it further because we don't you know, life is too short youtube videos are too long all right, um, window event. This is gone in SDL 3. Now, don't get nervous. You still have window events, but the way this worked in SDL 2, excuse me, I'm taking a sip of tea there, is you would look for this specific event, and then you would have a second switch case to look for individual sub-events, and that was ridiculous, so we just made the sub-events main events. They just All you have to do is move these things up to the top of the, uh, the top level of the switch statement, and I'm going to take the time to do this, that drives me nuts when people declare a variable and just assign it on the next line. Just do it on one. Life, you know, life's too short for that. Anyway, let me just not judge everyone's code too much here and just condemn it. Now, as I go down here, I'm so sure someone's going to be like, "Why? You know, if you were just using VI or Emacs, you would be able to just indent whole blo re uh, change the indentation on whole blocks." But you know what? I've been using this garbage editor since the 1990s, and you can pry it out of my cold dead hands, and that's all there is to that. So. And then that was the switch, the the original case bracket, so that can go. And that's that. I mean, these, I think this stuff will all work the same. It just they're they're top level events now instead of this weird sub event thing. No one can remember why we did that. It seems silly. We got rid of it in SDL three. That might be the whole event handler too. How good is that? It is the whole event handler. Hey, that's great. Okay, too few arguments to start text input. Let's go look at that for one second here. Or is start text input. Now this is also worth knowing too, is like the migration guide is there, but sometimes it's better to see the headers because they might have information that in a way that's easier to look at really quickly. But you might notice if you look at this documentation, you look at the wiki, it's the same text. So it's whatever is easier. It's easier for you to grep for something versus search for it on a web page. Do what you like best. When we make a change to the documentation in the headers, it goes to the wiki, and when you make a change on the wiki, it goes to the headers. Uh, and you can see the commits going back and forth on GitHub. It's kind of cool. But if you prefer web pages, and frankly, sometimes they're better because they're pretty and easy to read as opposed to necessarily monospace text, you can just go to anything wiki.libstl.org and that function name, and it'll give you documentation on it. Lots and lots of documentation. I would say about 95 to 99% of SDL3's 
symbols are fully doc and heavily documented at this point. Uh, we put an enormous amount of time into documenting SDL3 because all we any open source library here is, but anything we ever heard. All we ever heard all the time was, oh, the documentation's bad. I wish there was better documentation. So we made enormous Herculean efforts to improve it in lots of different ways. And this is one of the ways we did it. So you should be able to look at the wiki for any function in SDL and get really good documentation on it. Um, and if not, it's just one wiki edit away for, to improving it everywhere. If you don't like the web pages, if you don't like looking for it in the in the header files, this will also generate Unix man pages, and also you can, at the at the bottom of the wiki, click this link that says offline HTML, and it'll give you the entire wiki as static HTML files that you can read on the, an airplane without an internet connection. Um, it's super nice. But anyway, back to what we were doing here. Start text input, before it was just a void function, uh, a function that returned void. Now it return it needs an SDL window, and the reason for this, and I'm not going to change this in Quake 3 right now because this is one of those redesigned things, um, SDL window, is that this on many many platforms now, uh, this, on desktops this would default to on, and on iOS and Android stuff it would default to off because it pops up a virtual keyboard um, if the system has that. Now, on, in SDL3, we've gotten much more aggressive about this, so you do not want to turn this on on any platform, and it defaults to off on all platforms until you literally want to handle text. Um, so, in Quake 3, you might want to pop up the screen that says enter your CD key or type in your player name, and then call SDL start text input just then so it might possibly run up a virtual keyboard they could enter their stuff and when they're done you want to call stop text input to turn that off instead of just assuming you're going to get text all the way through. Um, text input, keyboard input in general is a lot more complicated than people think it is so we have written um, best keyboard, did I spell this right? Best keyboard practices, let me see if I got that right Hey, I got it right. Okay, on the wiki there's a document called Best Keyboard Practices which will tell you everything you need to know about the correct way to get keyboard input, depending on what you're trying to do. Like, you know, whether you want a 101 button joystick, which is kind of what Quake 3 wants for the most part, or, you know, you're looking for specific keys, like you hit the I key for inventory, or you're running a chat box, you know, like it has all that stuff, the correct way to get around to doing that in there. So you should definitely read that. It'll save your life and it'll also make customers you have in different countries with different keyboard layouts very happy. So read that later. Um, start text input, and I can see right down here is stop text input, so let's fix that too. Um, text input is per window now too. It knows to pop up the virtual keyboard for specific windows. Um, so that's why that has changed. All right, let's build again. Whoops, come back. Let's build again. And that's it. We are through events. That's great. We've got joysticks done, we've got mouse done, we've got keyboard done, we've got event handling done, we're just rocking right through this. Which is why it makes me sad that I now have to explain a great deal about audio to you, because the thing that has changed the most in SDL3 might be the audio subsystem. Alright, um, first things first, this error that came up, it doesn't know what to do with this, and the Cosinel script did not change this, because there is no more unsigned 16-bit audio in SDL3. We're going to dump these out. Um, nobody used it, but more importantly, um, you can't use memset or something like that that takes a single byte value to set 16-bit unsigned audio to silence, because saying it to zero is not silence, and it would have and it 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 would be like hexadecimal zero eight zero zero, but you couldn't set it in a single byte, so it was kind of a hassle. If you really, really wish you had it, the migration guide has, um, here it is, a very, very tiny piece of code. This very simple for loop will turn your unsigned 16-bit audio into signed 16-bit audio, which does not suffer from any of these problems, so that'll get you back on track if you were using it. Quake 3 doesn't use it. This thing was only there uh, as to, to print out that the audio device might have wanted that format, but that's not going to be a problem going forward here, so we just ta we're just taking it out of the table. Um, and we're going to deal with that in a moment, too. We'll see what other errors come up here. We'll just keep on this track, because this is working pretty well. All right. Um, we're now 40 minutes into this. Uh, you can tell my voice is starting to give out, so we're going as fast as we can here. Um, 
Okay, print audio spec. We have no member name samples. So that's, I can see lots of errors about this coming up. We'll deal with that. Um, the audio spec, SDL audio spec, this booger right here, um, is much simpler in SDL3. In SDL2 it had a whole bunch of fields. In SDL3 it only has three. It has frequency for sample rate, channels for like mono, stereo, surround sound, and um, format. Like is it 16-bit audio? Is it 8-bit audio? Is it floating point? Um, samples is gone. We're just going to delete it. Um, and we'll explain that in a moment, but that'll get us through this thing. Most, there's a whole bunch more of these. Ah, okay, yeah. Let's just go back and go through this a little bit, because this is, most of your problems are going to be getting set up here, so. Sound DMA init, which, uh, back in a time when we thought about DMA buffers when we wrote audio code, so. Um, okay. Dun dun dun, they have all their stuff. I can already see, yeah, there's all the sample stuff. So in SDL2 you would open an audio device, and usually, and you would give it an audio spec with a bunch of information, such as whether it used a callback, and then you would say, this is what I want. I want this kind of, these many samples, this format, this channel, this sample rate. And then maybe I got something different depending on what the hardware had. And you could say, I have to have those changes. I have to have nothing change or you can, I'm flexible about certain things can change. We've simplified this a great deal in SDL3. SDL3, mostly the, the metaphor that we're going for is the SDL audio stream. Now these exist in SDL2, but they are, play a much bigger role in SDL3. Um, so, uh, generally what you would do in, uh, in, the, in the, the, the bigger idea is you would open an audio device, you would create an audio stream, and you would bind the two together and feed data to the audio stream, and as the device needed it, it would pull more data that you fed it from the audio stream, uh, and things would go on. Now, most people do not need this because you could do cool things like have multiple streams bound and have them mixed together for you and stuff, which is really neat, but most people mostly just want to have one thing that they're dumping audio to, so uh, we have a nice function called open audio device stream, which is different from open audio device, which will open the device, create a stream, and bind it for you. You don't have to mess around. It's meant to be the easy button on this one, so um, and it, frankly, it's what I would recommend to most games that aren't doing anything fancy. Uh, and the parameters to it, there's less of them, Device ID, spec, callback, and user data. So easy, easy. Except for this. So in SDL2, you would open a device by name. You would say Sound Blaster Pro 16, Sound Blaster 16 Pro, whatever it was called. And uh, you get that list of strings from SDL, and you could pick a specific one. If you didn't want a specific one, you wanted SDL to pick, you would just say null, which is probably what most people did. Doing this by strings was a terrible idea, because among other things, you could have two sound cards with the same name in a, in a machine if they had like USB things plugged in, etc. So um, we got rid of that. Now we do it by device IDs. If you want to get an enumeration of devices, it works the same way as Get Joysticks did. It gives you a list of IDs uh, that are stable. But if you don't care what you would pass a null for SDL2, you would pass this instead. Audio device default playback. And that thing... Uh, is a little better than the null in SDL2 because now in SDL3 it's smart enough to notice when the default device changes. If a user yanks out a USB device or plugs in headphones or goes into their system control panel and picks a different device, SDL will notice that and switch your play your playback over to that new hardware without telling you. I mean, there is an event. You can find out if that happened if you care about that, but if you just want to play stuff, it'll just seamlessly migrate to the new hardware without missing a beat, and you won't have to know about it. You just keep playing audio like you did. And part of the reason that works is because you now use an audio stream. And audio streams were good at buffering and converting audio. Uh, and part of the magic of that is that when you move to new hardware, it doesn't matter if the format changed because the stream will just carry on converting to a new format, and you just keep feeding it the same way you always did. Um, okay, so we need a spec. We'll call this desired. That's what it was called. In Quake already, so we set it up up here with all our things, like these are the channels we want, blah blah blah. And he's desired, it needs a callback, which would be this thing, because that's not part of the spec anymore. And it needs user data, which is null in this case, they never set it. They probably zeroed it out with the struct. Okay, easy. Now we did not set up obtained, and SDL does not write that anymore, because there is no more in SDL3 hey, here's what you actually ended up getting. You can query for it if you want it, 
but as far as you're concerned, whatever you asked for is what we will set the audio stream to. So, um, and you can query the device ahead of time to say, oh, this is what it's already set to? Well, then, if that's what I want is to be as close to that as possible, then you can just request that specific format and go forward. Um, I'm not going to change these right now, but this is playback device is now a stream instead. It's it's no longer an in a, it's no longer an, an instance ID. It's actually a pointer to an object, so these won't be zero anymore. They'll be null, um, and we'll take care of fixing that up later. But and then you know if that failed, okay, quit the subsystem and give up because that's how it's going. But let's worry about this thing right now, the callback, because this is a little different in SDL3. You still can have a callback, as you can see but it does not work the same way anymore. Um, now it wants an audio stream callback. Let's go click on that real quick. This gobbledygook. Let's go find this audio callback. There you are. Okay. This is Quake 3's audio callback for its SDL code. Let's go ahead and replace that. Oops, they should have been SDL call and SDL 2, but that's all right. We're going to let it slide. There we go. Now, in the SDL2 callback, user data was ever, whatever pointer you gave it when you opened the device. Um, we gave it a null. We don't care about it in Quake 3. Um, then a buffer called stream, and then the number of bytes that you had to write into that buffer. This could be whatever format the device was opened as. You had to take care of that. Um, but the the uh, you had to write relentlessly every time this callback called. You had to write this many bytes to this stream. And if you did not have bytes to write, you had to write silence to it. Uh, otherwise, it would, you know, have audio issues. It would have repeating sound or static or whatever was there uh, in the buffer by accident. So, but in SDL3, this works a little differently. We have uh, you still have that pointer if you want it. Uh, you have an audio stream. This is a func This is an object now instead of a, a, just a raw buffer. Um, this is the amount of data it needs to satisfy the, the request that was just made to it, and this is the actual amount it needs in total, but like it might have some of that already buffered and only needs a tiny bit more to fully make the request. Now, some games want this, some games want this, depending on what they're doing, um, if you're using a callback. So we provide both of those things to you. But in Quake 3's case, we just need to give it however much more it needs to deal with uh, playing some sound. So... Um, most of this is going to work the same. Obviously, you can't mem set the stream because it's uh, an object and not a buffer anymore, so we'll just take that out. Um, it's worth noting, this callback is entirely voluntary, too. Like, you do not have to do anything in this callback. If you choose not to give it any audio, it will run out of audio and just play silence. It'll say, oh, I have nothing left, and it'll just have nothing to mix into what's giving to the audio device, the physical hardware, and it'll just keep going as it is. You do not have to give it stuff. You can also give it more than it wants, because it'll just buffer it into the audio stream. Um, so this is entirely just whatever works best for your program. It's a lot less strict than it was in SDL2. Alright, let's throw a const, const int len in here, because that's what this was called in the original callback. Just, but we only care about additional amount. We don't need to fill the entire buffer, just whatever the slush is that needs to get through. Um, to buff in, dun, 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 dun. And then it looks like it's just a basic ring buffer. It copies whatever's there till the end of its ring, and then it goes back to the beginning of the ring and fills in whatever else it needs. So instead of doing a mem copy here, this is super easy. We're just going to do SDL put audio stream data. It's still called stream. Don't have to change that. This is the point in the stream it's going to go from, and this is the number of bytes it's going to write. It actually turned out to be just like a mem copy call in that case. Um, and then it'll do some wrapping around. And then if we have to go to the beginning of the ring buffer, we'll do the same thing again. Except it won't be stream plus length because it's an object, so just when you put stuff, it puts it to the end of the audio stream's queue, so you can just say that again. And that copies from the beginning of the buffer, length 2. Okay, that's it. Oh, what's this? STL master gain. Oh! Okay, so this this is wrapped in an audio capture thing, because Quake 3 has uh, voice over IP support, and when you have speakers and a microphone, when you're about to record something that you want to say to your team, like, hey, look out behind you or something, you want the volume of what's coming out of your speakers to drop dramatically so that you don't record that and send it in your voice over IP packet, because that will cause feedback and also sound bad for other people. So uh, so Quake has a way to say, hey, I'm recording, turn the volume down. 
and what they do is they say a number between 0 and 1, 0 being silence, 1 being normal volume, and they just multiply each sample by that as they go. The good thing is you do not have to do this in SDL3, and I'll show you why, but for now we're just getting rid of it. Goodbye. It's gone. Um, not needed anymore. Okay, cool. So let's go back down here. We um, smacked my microphone, sorry about that. We have the device stream. We opened it. It'll use that callback, so more or less we're functioning as we were before. There's a problem that... Um, we're just going to copy... What is it? Obtained, desired... You always get exactly what you asked for in SDL3. Uh, you, uh, w even if the audio stream is doing some conversion to what the art, uh, audio hardware wants. But So we'll just copy, we'll just implement, uh, we'll just... Uh, fill in obtain to say we got exactly what we wanted from this. Everyone's happy, so that'll work as expected. And moving on. DMA samples needs to be big. Okay. Okay. Um, we don't have obtained samples anymore. This this field does not exist in the audio spec, so let's just say search for is that. Let's just give it 2048 and get rid of all of this too, because this doesn't exist anymore so so we'll just say 2048 that's fine cool uh samples must be blah 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 okay cool all these things still worked we set up obtained so we don't have to do anything with that I don't know what all this does that's some Quake 3 specific thing and then if you're using the capture support to record audio to play use for voice over IP they have a bunch of stuff in here. Don't need samples, same as before. Formats, frequency channels, cool. Yeah, okay, good. And there's that master gain thing. We'll deal with that in a moment. Okay, good. Um, and they open the audio device. Now, we're going to do the same thing here, open audio device stream. But unlike the normal playback, this does not use a callback. This is the other SDL2 way to produce or uh, collect audio, um, where you don't uh, you don't use a callback to get anymore. You simply say, "Cue it up for me," and when it's done, I will pull when I'm ready to get some more from it, uh, which is exactly what an audio stream does. So, of course, this just uses an audio stream as well. So let me go find my parameters again for this. Let's go back here. Okay, so it was audio device ID, but um, we have a different one because we're recording audio. In SDL2, we called audio recording capturing, but nobody knew what that meant. So we have changed our wording on this a little bit. It's now, whenever you would have heard the word capture device before, we now say recording device. It, it just seemed like a more clear thing to do. So it's that, and then the spec which they have here, so spec. Uh, there was a true and false thing in, in SDL2 when you were opening it, saying whether it was a capture device or not. They all just have their own unique instance IDs now, so we don't have a separate device, uh, functions that would say, is it a capture or is it playback? They just work as they worked before. It's no big deal. Um, I just saw my Wi-Fi go away. I'm just going to poke that real quick because it's been kind of persnickety today. Hopefully that'll come back up. Oh, there it goes. Okay, good. Um, okay, so spec, because I want these web pages to work. And then callback is going to be null in this case. And then, obviously, since the callback's null, there's no user data for it, so that's that. Goodbye. Cool. Capture device is null. And that should be it. That should just get you capturing stuff, so that's good. That's Quake stuff. Okay, we got close stuff now. Um, close audio device still exists, but since we're not messing around in Quake 3 with audio devices, we just have a single stream for each device. You don't close it explicitly, you just call SDL destroy audio stream. And while you can have multiple streams and you would still use this to shut them down, it would unbind them, there is some special smarts in there to say that if you use this function that does all the magic stuff in one, it knows when you destroy that stream to also close the device. So. You don't have to mess with two objects there, you just have the one. We'll do that for this guy too. These aren't numbers anymore, they're pointers, so let's make them null just to be friendly about this. Okay, good. 
quit the subsystem. Yeah, good. Um, okay, unlock audio device also still works, but again, since we are dealing with an audio stream, they all have their own mutexes, so they're thread safe, and there's an API to just get at that mutex. So um, you can lock it, and once locked, it won't call the callback because you're holding the lock. Um, and when you unlock it, it'll call the callback if it needs to be done. Same with this. Uh, Quake calls this painting, audio painting. You begin painting, and it locks, it updates the audio buffer, and then it unlocks it at the end so that it has a consistent audio state when uh, the callback fires. Cool. Start capture. Um, okay, good. So again, this isn't using a callback, so it's not a locking thing. It's just simply we want to make sure. Uh, is it called clear audio stream? Is that what it is? So one thing you might have noticed while I'm looking this up in SDL three, all the functions now have a very specific um, format. They're all SDL verb object uh, verb noun. We'll say uh, instead of being like. SDL subsystem verb object or whatever like that. Um, we wanted to, we, we felt like this flowed better as English, but also like we had some things that uh, specified a subsystem name, some things that didn't, some things that had noun then verb, like all of that got cleaned up and consolidated in SDL3. Uh, so that is why that looks like that now. Okay, yeah, it's clear audio stream. It just says because device cues are gone, it's just the audio stream does it all. So, but you use it the same way as you would in SDL2. Um, resume audio device is now called resume audio device stream. Is that no stream device? Yes. Okay. Good. Um, resume audio stream. Uh, resume audio device still exists, but since again we are only dealing with the audio stream, we don't care about the device. We have a helper function so that you don't have to call sign to find out what the device ID is from the audio stream and then resume it. I should also say this, if you are using the fancier API, it, you do not need to resume it at start or unpause it perhaps is how we used to say it. Um, but with the simplified one, we assume that because you don't play anything with the fancier one until you bind an audio stream. So you can set up however you want before it'll start processing audio. But since this might start calling your callback immediately after you open the device, they start paused when you use this, the simpler system, so you have to explicitly pause and unpause them. Um, and Quake 3 uses pausing and unpausing to say, am I recording? Am I meant to be recording right now? No, well, pause it until I actually want to. Um, which is why that's there. Okay, and then we're almost there. I can see the progress bar is almost at the end of this thing, so let's scroll down. Oh yeah, we're almost there. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So let's see. Uh, available capture samples. So, get queued audio size is gone because we don't. It, there are no device queues anymore. So, it's now just SDL. Let me make sure I get the name of this right. SDL get audio stream available. Is that right? Oh, I'm a genius. Okay, good. Um, get audio stream available, and it returns number of bytes. Okay, cool. Uh, and if that fails, life is terrible. But whatever. Um, so that'll just simply say how much has been recorded that I haven't pulled in from it yet. And it'll figure that out for you, including all what it would be after it converted data if it was coming from a different format. Um, and then DQ audio, we do not have audio device cues anymore. So again, it's an audio stream thing, so it'll just be SDL. Get audio stream data, and it's the exact same thing as pudding. There's the stream and then the buffer you want to pull it into and the number of bytes, not samples, bytes, not sample frames, bytes, which is why you multiply it by two here because you want to convert from 16-bit samples to bytes. So that's all it is. And this doesn't check to make sure the samples is okay because Quake 3 made sure it had at least that many samples in the audio stream before it came through. So that's done, that's easy. And then stop capture is the same thing as resuming. We called it resume audio stream device. This would be pause because they're stopping the capture, so why process if you don't have to? And then we're back to this thing again. If you want to flip the uh, the gain down lower so it can record without picking up the speaker vo uh, output, they call this, but we do not need this variable anymore because we are not handling this. We're not going to run our own little for loop to process the data. We're just going to say SDL... What is it called? <laughs> Let me look this up real quick. SDL link 
include SDL3 audio gain something. Audio stream gain, I think. Yeah. Set audio stream gain. Okay. Uh, one is no change, zero is silence. You can actually make it louder too if you want, but it's just stream and gain. That's all there is to it. So, And since this is the only place we ever call this, what is it called? SDL capture device. I'm going to rename those in a second. And then value. If this is null because this failed, SDL will notice that and it'll just it won't crash or anything. It'll know not to do anything. Uh, which means we do not need... Let's change some variables here. We don't need master gain anymore because SDL is handling that for us. We do not need to worry if SDL is at least 2.05 because that's when audio capture showed up in SDL2 originally, so we'll just get rid of that check. Cool. Then after that, let's change this because it's not actually a device anymore. Playback device. Let's call that playback stream now. Just go through and change all these real fast. And what's the other one? Capture device. Oops. Capture device. Change that to capture stream. Now, if we were really getting aggressive about this, moving to SDL3, we would actually just call this capture. Uh, we stop calling it capture device. We would call it um, recording device. But this is kind of built into Quake 3 right now, and there are CVARs that are public for the user that will still say capture, and it would be improper to change those. So just for simplicity, we will keep these as capture when we're talking about Quake 3, but internally still called recording in SDL3. Um, okay, so uh, that should be it for audio. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it builds. Let's see if I screwed it up real bad. I appear to have screwed it up. Let's see. Audio spec has no member named callback. That's true. That can go, because we're now specifying that right here. Um. Oh! <laughs> um, these are not audio device IDs anymore. These are SDL audio stream pointers. Forgot to change the variable type name. That was a rookie mistake. Stream pointer. Cool. All right, we're in an hour now. Y'all with me still? Let's see if audio works now. Well, that was significantly better. Don't need that anymore. We got rid of that variable. Oops, forgot to change this one. Resume audio audio stream device. Is that what it was called? There we go. Go. And that's it. We're through audio. There's no more audio stuff to do. We're moving on to a different file. Unknown type name SDL version. That's true, this is gone in SDL3. Um, this used to be a struct that broke it down to major, minor, and patch version, or uh, they call it micro now, instead of patch. In SDL3, this is just an integer. Int ver equals... A get version is still there, though. SDL get version. And it's a void now, I think. Cool, so that'll take care of that. Um... Oh, I guess I'm going to say some more about this then. Okay. Um, so version's an integer, but it's uh, just the bits of it are packed in with the different parts. So like a couple of decimal places over is the major version, a couple more, a couple less over is the minor version, and then the patch. Uh, it's not a struct anymore, so uh, it means you don't have to do this. You can just say version. If version is less than this, th this macro that takes three numbers and makes it, crunches the bits into that one integer. Ta-da. Uh, maybe I'll be filmed. Okay, first off, HTTPS. Let's be sticklers about that, please. Um, this is now no longer a struct, so we need a magic macro, which I don't remember. Let me find that real quick. Code SDL3 include SDL version. There it is. Version number, whatever it's called. Where'd you go? Okay. Micro. So major, and just do that on the end. That macro will extract the bits you need for a specific part of this. Minor version, and then what was the last one? This says patch in SDL2. It's now actually micro. There you go, and that'll do that. SDL library too old, so we're taking this whole line now. Let's bump that down like that. All right, will that fix it? It would if I could spell version. Let's try that again. Alright, that got us through that. That was nice and easy.
It's now building middleware like Opus, so we're gonna just do a make J8 to get through. Like, we don't care how if there's errors in Opus, if they have nothing to do with SDL. Like, of course there's gonna be... Forbus is gonna have some compiler warnings, because it has for a long time. Now it's building the renderer. That might have... Yep, there is some SDL in there. That's okay. Um... That's the whole file. All right, we're going to cheat on this. Um, you cannot set a gamma ramp in SDL3. We've removed it because most systems didn't support it. And the ones that did, it didn't change the window. It changed the entire monitor, which was a really, like, antisocial thing for a program to do. It was not a good citizen of the desktop if it did that. So we're just going to put a fix me, use a shader. Sorry. Uh, that's really hand wavy because Quake 3 has exactly zero GPU shaders in it. Um, but that that is the generally accepted way to do this in modern times. Is you in your post processing you just adjust the gamma if, if you if the user wants it brighter as just one of your rendering passes. But this is not a thing that exists in SDL3 and generally did not work on most platforms. By the time we finally finished with SDL2, uh, it was just a technology that was fading. So it goes. So that's easy, though. It was one function in this file. We're just literally commenting it out, and we're moving on with our lives. All right, let's go back and see what else. All right, some more stuff. Okay, display modes. Yes. Uh, this is the same thing. This uh, this thing where you ask for the total and then you iterate through it. Uh, you get uh, display modes in an array the same as anything else, but I think we call this get full screen display modes. Is that it? Oh no, my network went down. Okay, this is why you have the headers. This is why you have the headers. Uh, code, SDL3. Full screen display mode. There it is. And it returns an array of pointers. Um, but this is fancy because you have to free this when you're done, but the array of pointers is actually, the way they did this, it's all in one big allocation, so a single free will get rid of the whole thing on the return value. Um, okay, get full screen display modes, where you at? So it would be display mode pointer pointer, we'll call that FS modes because they already have a variable called modes up there, I see. FS modes equals null, and we'll keep num SDL modes is what they call that, so. Um, I think there is something called SDL get primary display. So if you just need a display ID for this sort of thing, but that's, um, which would be the thing that has your taskbar on it. It may not be your centermost or leftmost or whatever, a rightmost display, but it's the one that we think the user is most likely to think of as their most important display, but I can see up here they already look at the window and say, what display is it on? Um, that should be an SDL display ID, not an integer anymore. That could be cons too, I think. Um, and since it's an ID and not something that fails, it's now zero instead of negative one if there's a problem. But we have one is the point, so we'll just say display like that. Oops, display like that. Yeah. FS modes is that. That can go away. Get window full screen mode. All right, let's build this and see what it likes at this point. Make. Makes pointers. Oh, yeah, I forgot to make that. Address. Okay, try that again. Too many arguments to get window full screen mode. Because it should actually be just a single SDL window. Oh, that returns, okay. This returns a pointer to display mode. Being a cons pointer, we don't want you to free it, but also it means SDL owns it. So you do not have to free it or whatever. You just just use it. Um, get window full screen mode. Okay, so this should actually be a cons display mode. All right, let's call this P window mode. I know that's stupid. I hate when people do put a P in front of things, but uh, just to keep the code from having to change too much, what we'll do is we'll get the pointer and then we'll just copy it into our own one so that we don't have to go through and change everything that has a dot into, you know, an arrow. 
Uh, da -da -da. So that would be get window full screen mode. So we would do yeah. P window mode equals that. Get rid of this for a moment. We'll copy that in there. If P window mode equals null, it's a pointer. Doesn't return an integer anymore. Uh, or the number of modes is wrong, then do then bail out. Okay. So then at that point we're just going to do an SDL copy p. Which by the way, if you've been wondering why I've been doing this, this is it work. It basically is just a mem copy inside, but it it it's type safe unlike mem copy. So I highly recommend if you have SD if you're using SDL to take advantage of this instead of using mem copy or SDL mem copy because it it'll catch a bug for you you didn't know about window mode. There you go. So now we don't have to change this window mode already has what we need. That's code that we want to mess with later. That's good. Um, we own this array though, so we do have to free it. If we return, let's do that real quick. Look for things that say return in here. Continue, continue, continue. Oh, that might be it. Okay, good. Nice. Oh, no, I see a return in here. Hang on. Snuck one in go. Alright, so that's taken care of, and they do their thing. That's probably a bug. Let's go ahead and put a return in there if they've run out of memory. Alright, num SDL modes, blah blah blah. Alright, we do not need to call SDL get display mode anymore, because that was the motif before where you would iterate through it, the, the usage pattern where you would ask for the total and iterate through it in an array. Now we have that array, so um, we can just do SDL copy p mode fs modes i that'll do it I can't fail and then that thing's just good as it is nice and modes is an SDL rect right yeah okay so they only need basically width and height out of this so that's what they set up okay that's good and they sort it very nice and that's it. They just needed to have a list of things to... Yeah, okay, I think that's good. I think that's good. Alright, I'm not going to go... In. Quake has spaces on all these, which drives me nuts. Let me do this real quick, just so I don't... I know, I'm being... being that guy. Okay, so let's save that and see how we did. Expected blank before if. Whoops. Yeah, that should have a semicolon. My bad. Let's try this again. Passing argument one from create server. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, this was the Cosinel script screwed this up because they were trying to get clever with get pixel formats for masks, and they did not expect us to have all this stuff to try and do our little Indian stuff ourselves. That's not good. But that's why the Cosinel script is not a silver bullet. It just helps you out mostly. Um, okay, so we're going to clean up this mess real quick. Create surface from... Did my internet ever come back? I can't tell. Come on, internet. Be with me, man. Try my phone, see if it's working any better. Yeah, that's working. Okay. Create surface from... There we go. Okay. Um... Okay, so it's width, height, format, pixels, pitch. Mostly the same, but a couple of things different. Width and height moved up to the front. Yeah. This is, they're creating the icon for, like, you know, what would be in the dock for systems that support that. Width, height, format. This is where things went terribly wrong with this get format for masks thing. So let's, um, gosh, okay. Um, goodbye. Get rid of all of this. Goodbye. Use the icon. Okay, yeah. Um, the thing is, they were trying to figure. They were tr using a function which still exists in SDL three to say, "Here are some bit masks. Tell me what the pixel format for that is." But you can do this much faster. RGBA thirty two, as opposed to RGBA eight 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 eight. Instead of saying it's definitely in uh, in byte order of R, then G, then B, then A, byte, 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 you can just say 
It's this, but it's in 32-bit format, and if we're on Little Endian system, it's laid out ABGR. If it's the other way around, if it's a, a big Endian one, it's laid out RGBA, or backwards, if I got that backwards. This might also be backwards, this might actually have to be ABGR, but I don't actually know right now, so we'll, we'll say RGBA for now, and if the icon's wrong, we can fix it later. Okay, so with height, format, pixels, there's our pixels, put a comma on that, and then pitch, which is bytes per pixel times width. Okay, that's it. That's the whole thing. Whoa, what are you doing over there? There you go. Cool. Okay, so that should fix that problem. Too few arguments to get desktop display mode. Too few arguments. Too many arguments. Okay. Declare it here. Same thing as the other thing we're looking at. It now takes a pointer like that. So let's fix that up real quick. desktop mode, same deal as before. We don't own it, so we don't have to worry about freeing it, but... Okay, so now this would just be p... p desktop mode equals this. We already have the display, so we don't have to mess with that. Cool, if p desktop mode equals null as a pointer. Um, oh, except that zero was actually for success in SDL2, so if that p desktop mode does not equal null, then you just want to pull it, then let's SDL copy p desktop mode from p desktop mode, and then just carry on as we were. And that can do all its math, and we don't actually care what it's doing here, so... Cool. If that failed, then... Whatever, it just moves on. It's no big deal. Desktop mode's looking happy, so we'll carry on from there. Alright, let's save that and build it again, see if we're happy. Oh, we would be if I spelled things correctly. Create window. Okay. Um... What it doesn't like about this is that in creating a window in SDL3, we got rid of these two parameters, X and Y. And there's two ways you can do this. Um, because most things don't care about positioning the window. They only care they want it on the screen at a certain height with a title and some other flags. Now there's two ways you can do this. The correct way to do this is complicated. So um, we're going to cheat on this. I'm going to put the cheat in here real quick. So they create the window. If it worked out okay, we're just going to cheat and go SDL set window position SDL window X and Y. This is not the right thing to do because this could very possibly have your user see the window come up and then pop to some other place. You can get around that by hiding the window, creating the window hidden, setting its position, and then showing it. But the correct way to do this is more complicated. We have moved all the stuff all the millions of little things you can do to a window, not just the X and Y, off to what are called properties. Um, properties in SDL3, it's a new thing. It's basically a fancy key value pair database. You can set it up with whatever you want into it. Um, create window with properties. And there are several things in SDL that have, here's the easy way to do it, that covers the things you mostly care about, and here's the complicated way to do it where you can say, instead of giving it parameters, you give it a single properties ID, key value, store, database. And here are the properties you can set. There's lots of them, right? Um, if you want to get really fancy. Some of them are platform specific, like X11 window number. But uh, in there is width and height, uh, I'm sorry, not width and height. They're in there is X and Y, if you want to set those at startup. And then SDL will be smart enough not to pop that window somewhere else. It'll set it, it'll start it at the right place. But since most people didn't need it, we removed that and to have a more simple API. And if you want the complexity, it's there, but we don't need it for the most part. And I'm just going to cheat here and do it like this. Although in a purely technical perfection world, this is not the right thing to do, but it'll get the job done. So Video game development is always about mess and hiding your messes, and we're hiding a mess right now. But definitely looking to create window with properties later, because it does all sorts of magical fun things if you care about it. All right, building again. 
Display mode has no member name driver data. That's true. We hid that. You didn't, they, and they didn't care about it. They were just blanking it out. So we'll get rid of that. Comparison of constant zero to Boolean expression is always false. Oh! Okay, to demonstrate that people do not actually check return values very often, we are this far into this. We are almost done. And this is the first time we've hit this. Um, all of SDL2, almost all of SDL2, would be a function like SDL my function, some API you would call, blah, whatever, and it would return int. And if there was an error, it would return negative one. And if it was successful, it would return zero. This is an old school Unix mentality, and we got rid of this in SDL3. Um, cause, so you would do things like if I called SDL my function, whatever, and if it was less than zero, it returned negative one, that would be an error, right? And otherwise, if it returned zero, it would be success. But in SDL3, we don't use the NA anymore. All of those functions now return bool. Um, and as you can see, we very rarely re check return values. Oftentimes, it's not worth checking them. Um, I'm not of the school that thinks that you should check every return value. Some of them are just simply not worth checking. As you can see from the fact we've gotten this far before we got bit by this. Um, but so something like set window full screen mode, the compiler will notice that these this is not a bool. You can't compare a bool to negative uh, to less than zero. So it caught this for you. So uh, they're saying if it's less than zero, if it fails, and so now you would say if not. SDL set window full screen. And that reads like English, so that seems nicer to me than, you know, checking if it's less than zero, which is just a convention that is kind of less understandable if you aren't, you know, initiated into the ways. So um, when you when you compare like that, though, the compiler will catch it, which makes your life easier. But I bet there's some places that we did not compare that way and we're going to have to fix up. Uh, but that's the first one we've run into, so probably not that many of them. Um, like, this function can fail. Do you care if it fails? No, you don't. Okay, set window full screen mode, we fix that. Let's go on and see what else it likes. Comparison of constant negative one with boolean... Oh, see, there's another one. There's a couple of these in a row now. Equals negative one, you can't compare a bool to that, so the compiler caught it. If not that, then you say it failed. That's so much nicer, isn't it? I like it. Okay, assignment to blah blah blah. Oh, okay. Uh, Multi-text chord to F. Text. Oh, they don't have typed Fs for these. Oh, I don't want to mess with it. Uh. Uh. All right, let's just do it real quick here. Oh, wait, are these functions or? No, they're not. Okay. So we're just going to change these real quick. This is, this is annoying. Function pointers are the worst. Point pointer. I just put a T at the end of it. It's fine. Okay, good. Sorry. This is um, basically we're just getting hit by the same thing. It's uh, SDL GL get proc address is the same thing as load fun SDL load function. It will it returns a function pointer now instead of a void pointer, so we're just going to fix this up super fast. TTT, good, so now these things just need to be T like that, I think. Sorry, almost done. Hopefully I did that right. Let's see how we get to do these two. Nope, come here. Almost done, almost done. Alright, famous last words. Let's see how this goes. Oh, I gotta do all these as type defs too. Type def. Uh, I will say that. We're doing this for technical purity here, but if you really wanted to, you could just go into this get proc address and cast this thing to void pointer. And on modern system, on almost any system you could imagine, that's going to work. But if you ever do get some weird system, you want to do this correctly. Or if, like, computing paradigm shift and, like, quantum computers need it or something. I don't know, whatever. Um, 
it's good to prepare for that. So, okay, um, so we got that, and then we just got to come in here and say, do these casts correctly. Stop. T. Almost there. Okay, that'll fix that. Oh, they actually did do the cast down here. That's gross, though. We're, let's fix that while we're here, because no one can read that. There. Isn't that nicer? Okay, good. Um, get integer. Okay, that doesn't look for any function pointers, so we should be good. Let's build it again and see what happens. Helps if you type the full thing out. There you go. Implicit decoration, uh, declaration of set window brightness. Oh, same thing as before. No gamma support. Fix me. Use the shader. Sorry. Equals Q false. Q false is Quake's version of Boolean false. Uh, dun, 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 set window brightness, because you can't call that to see if it's supported. The answer is it's never supported, so just set it to zero and set it false and be done with it. Uh, and then there is another one of these. We set window full screen is greater than or equal to toggle equals that, so we want to say let's do a not not so that comes well. Let's I don't know if these map exactly, so better safe than sorry. We'll just explicitly say that if it worked. Okay. I guess that's okay. That's the end of the file, so I guess that's probably going to work. All right, that might be all the Quake code. We're into we're into JPEG now. I guess it did Opus before, but this might be the end of it. Let's see. Let's let it just cook along. Oh no, it's doing a renderer still. Well, oh well, I don't know. Let's see. It's, it's going. It's going. Okay, we're into the client code. Oh, there's a warning. That's not an SDL thing. That's just in there. It's doing the UI code. It's doing the mission pack. I think we might be there. Same thing as before. We're just going to let this cook for a moment. Mm. That was not an SDL thing. That's good. Oh, that's it. Make. Oh, That's it. There is nothing else to do. <laughs> All right. Build. Release. Okay, what do we have in here now? We have read elf IOQ3 dead. We need the dynamic stuff. Uh, grip needed. All right, the decade server only links against glibc and the math library, of course. Um, that had nothing to do with us. IOQuake3 is the client program, the video stuff. Only linking against SDL3, no SDL2. What was the other one? The renderer, the OpenGL1 renderer. Same deal. How the OpenGL2 renderer. I don't know which one we're going to use here. Same deal. Okay, so this is it. We have binaries that are only linked against SDL3. Okay, 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 okay. Let's run it. Let's see what it does. IO Quake 3. Ah, oh, gosh. Okay, let's just see if it works. Oh my god, okay, the video! Well, no sound, but... Alright, uh, well, this is promising so far. Hey, I know these guys. Okay, um... Let's see. Oh, I can see already in the log file. SDL init audio failed. Why is that? SDL init audio... Oh. <laughs> well, there you go. There's an up there's one we did not get. You can compare bool against zero to see if it matches. So uh, you want to say if not, because it's a bool now, and it's the opposite too. So uh, that, in fact, did not fail. Oh, that one bit us. So you got to watch out for that going forward. Um, let's just look for everything that says SDL init. Let's see if we missed any other ones like joystick or anything. Okay, that's the SDL2 headers. 
Oop, that one's wrong. Oh, somehow that worked anyway. Okay. If not that, that failed. Okay. That's probably not true anymore. Okay. That one's wrong. Let's fix that. Aren't we glad we checked this? That one's wrong. Okay. We fix that one, and then we're into the SDL3 headers, and that's it. Okay, let's just go ahead and make that one more time. Okay, build, release. Let's try it again. Here we go. Oh! That's the audio we were craving right there. All right. There we go. Beautiful sound. We love it. Okay. Um, mouse is obviously working. Fight. Bring it on. Oh, yeah. Welcome to Quake 3 Arena. Welcome to Quake 3 Arena. Look at this cute guy there. How you doing? Got about as many, poly Crash. Got about as many polygons as the cyber truck there. That's good. Um, relative mouse is working. Just scroll forever in one direction. That's good. Sounds working. Mouse buttons are working. Keyboard's obviously Enter working. The portal to begin combat. Let's see. Text input's working for the Quake console. Surprise! I'm right here. Oh, ow! Oh, well. I'm not very good at this game, apparently. So. Um. Say hello to my little friend. Alright, anyway, the point is, this works. I'm gonna quit out before she kills me again. We did it! It only took us an hour and 30 minutes, too, almost exactly. So that's it. The thing is running on SDL3. It's not running on SDL2 anymore. It's supercharged, as they say. Um, and that took an hour and a half, but that is an hour and a half you never have to do again. You just move it once, and then you just carry on. You're no longer an SDL2 developer. You're now an SDL3 developer. So this is huge. Um, how big was the final diff on this? 1,500 lines. And you know we did the make file, cleaned up some things. I mean it's I mean it's all the stuff you just saw me do. Uh, although it should be said that of this 1500, remember you know 666 of that was from uh, uh, the semantic patch that we didn't have to do. So um, it was pretty 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 painless overall. Uh, not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, okay, so that's it. I feel like this was a good overview. This covered an enormous amount of important stuff that can get you up and running with your own game on SDL3. So um, don't be afraid to do it. SDL3 is awesome. It's ready to use right now. We're going to have an official release really soon, but the ABI and the API are ready and stable now, so you can go ahead and use it. And some big name things like Steam and Steam Link and all of Valve stuff, Dota 2, CS2, all that stuff is not only using it now, but it's been using it for a while. So it's battle-tested and hardened and ready to go. Um, so I can't wait to see what you guys do with this. I can't wait to see what you build with it, what you port from older versions to this. Um, it's going to be awesome. So, all right, thank you for spending so much time with me. This is a bit of a marathon, but we got through it. And um, all right, have a good day. I'll see you next time.